was telling uh, LeBeau out back, it's a lot easier to come up here first thing at 7 and just start firing off insults to all you guys. <laughs> and, uh, and then just kind of getting through announcements and sitting back down and then just kind of laughing about it. Um, and then I was also telling them for the new guys that always show up and we make you stand up and you're like, man, I thought I was just going to get a free breakfast and just listen to something and then get out of here without anyone talking to me and handing me a handout. It's got to be pretty intimidating as well. Not too many men's groups you can go to around the valley that's going to have 100 dudes just sitting there staring, waiting for one dude to say one thing, and hopefully the Holy Spirit just shows up and impacts your life. Um, this, uh, I was reading through this last night, and it hit me, Bobby's praying, it hit me. If you're brand new, you're like, we got a bunch of crybabies. I'll meet you outside when we're done. We'll talk about it. <laughs> but I think what happens is, is when you start going through life, and I'm definitely not in overtime yet, kind of about half time. Um, but you just, when you start getting in God's word and you realize like the impact that it really can make if you would just shut up and listen to what God has to say to you and, and the way that God will just show up in a mighty way after all the things that you've done and continue to do and continue to rebel against His Word, when you sit down and you put yourself just in the presence and you just ask God to show up and just, just tell me what you want me to, to talk about and get the heck out of the way, uh, man, it just it hits me. And um, yeah, I, I hope that, uh, that it resonates with, uh, with you guys. So a couple weeks ago, I had to, I'm going to tell you how I landed on this topic real fast. It's Know Your Why. I could have called it a million different things, but they hit me up and was like, hey, what's the title of this? And I was like, I don't, I don't know your why. So but the, a couple of weeks ago, I had to do a presentation about a business that I own. Um, and I had to give it in, in front of a room of uh, pagans. And uh, it wasn't a, a Christian event. Or, and I was really reluctant. I didn't want to start hammering like, this is why I do what I do because of God. I uh, it was really... It was really focused just about my family. I mean, I spent uh, 20 something years in the workplace. I've jumped around jobs, and now here I am, a small business owner, and, and, and I got you know adult children, uh, grandkids now, or a grandkid. Um, and I'm like, my why is my family? And I was just hammering. I was like, this is why I do. And then, like, the last slide was about my business, and I was like, oh, this is what we do. We change tires in your driveway, you know. And I mean, I felt good about it. A lot of people in that room were like, man, that was awesome. That was great. That's fantastic. I didn't know you, you had, you know, your family. Then I got in my truck. And God was like, I'm your why. He said it to me right there. He said, LJ, I got to be your why. And I was like, dang it. I had the chance. I stood in front of a room of 20 people. And man, my family's beautiful. My wife's endured a lot. I'm going to get done crying here in a minute. But man, when he hit me with that, I was like, all right, I know what we're teaching on. I know what I need to know right now. And I need to know how to get back to like making you my why all the time. Because as much as I love my family and as much as my kids are a blessing and, and the job's great and the homes are fine. And, you know, finally, you know, I, the first house I ever lived in was the one I bought for my wife and I at 19 years old. And and, uh, you know, we, our marriage, I remember when I made it to 13 years, I thought, oh, did it better than mom and dad did. I thought, man, I'm, I'm not hung up on drugs and alcohol. I'm not sleeping around. Well, I was sleeping around early on in my 20s, but I made it past that point. I got saved in 07, and I was like, Jesus is my why. Jesus was my why so much, my wife got angry about it. She's like, I don't understand this transformation. Why are you so different all of a sudden? Why are you running around the house telling our littles about Jesus? But he saved me. He's my why. Then you start getting in that walk, right? You start walking as a believer, and some of you are new, some of you, some of you are, are young in that faith. But something happens, man, when you start, you start thinking you get it figured out. I don't know how many years down the road that was for me. Probably about 12, 13, I started thinking, well, I got this. It almost ruined my marriage two years, two and a half years ago, because I was like, no, oh, I can do this without Jesus. He's not my why. My why is to start this business and make this money. My why is to have a hunting cabin in every state that allow me to kill six animals every season because Arizona sucks. That's my why. I'm going to go make all the money I can, and I don't care if I'm going to sacrifice my wife. My kids hated dad. 
Kids were moving out. My kid quit on the job. Man, that sucked. That was really bad. But my wife was just tore apart. And, uh, and then thankfully because of this group, because of the men in this room that allowed me to come to their house, sat in some garages, sat in some back patios, they just kept pounding me, pounding me, pounding me. Quit being stupid and figure out your why. And um, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm talking about this. We've got to know our why. Jesus is the why. He restores, he heals, he redeems, he loves, he doesn't judge. You're not bigger than the sin you committed. You're not bigger than the sin you're going to commit. He'd still go to the cross for you. Okay, we don't have to do redos. I love, I love telling myself that. God doesn't have to do a redo because LG's an idiot sometimes. So self-worth, knowing your why at times is a struggle for all of us. Uh, whether or not you were raised in a Christian home, I definitely wasn't. I didn't know the Lord until I was uh, late, mid-20s. My mom moved away when I was in early 20s. She was like my best friend. I grew up with a mom and two sisters. That's probably why I cry a lot. Go figure. My name, nickname was Waterfall when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm proud of it. It was. It, it let it stick. My mom moved to Oregon um, when I was in my early 20s, and um, it was my wife and my daughter, and it was like my best friend moved away. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Somehow, some way, God showed up in Oregon, uh, and if you've ever been there, I spent over a decade visiting that place every summer, and I personally didn't think God was allowed to go into Oregon, but that's not for here nor there. <laughs> and uh, she got saved uh, up in Oregon. Her, her and my stepdad get saved, and uh, one day she calls me, and she's just bawling. I'm like, Mom, I can't hear you. I'm going to hang up. I'll talk to you later. And she's like, I, I'm sorry for never teaching you about Jesus. And I was like, well, that's fine. Now, in the time... My why was working for a lot of money, trying to make a lot of money. I was early 20s. I was sleeping around. I was having one-night stands. I didn't know half the people that I was messing around with. But I had a wife and child at home, and then God showed up. I didn't have the family. I didn't have the Christian family. My dad, uh, his, he drug uh, addict, alcoholic, uh, was out by the time I was 10, 11. And uh, I just knew that if I showed up every night and slept in my house, I was doing better than my dad. Not to judge him, I've, I've wholeheartedly forgiven my dad. I love my father. I hope that he puts his faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. But that was what I was modeled. I remember thinking, like, I don't even know how to shave. What does this look like? And I didn't. It was a mess. Some of you were raised uh, in, a, in a way that you connected your personal identity to this world. Uh, for the younger guys in here, I, I have an 18 and 20 year old son and a 26 year old daughter. And for some reason, they think that, like, if they need something, they go to this app called TikTok. And they're going to figure out all things in life. And I'm like, this is not the way. This is not going to work out for you. <clears throat> but that's where they, they're finding their, uh, you know, identity markers is through, like, what social media tells us and how we just get beat up and uh, through just kind of, like, putting ourselves out there uh, and trying to judge on everyone else's lives uh, through that. So um, the way you, way you were raised or connected your identity to external markers. So... Um, we're going to get into scripture, don't worry. Everyone knows that that's the best part of what we do up here. Regardless, there's times when we, we grab the world's measuring stick and use it to gauge our self-worth. This happens instinctively. We calculate our base on our looks. Excuse me. We calculate our value on looks, our home, the car we drive, um, just the possessions we have. Uh, I don't know, the home you live in. I remember, I remember when I first got saved, I told my wife, I said, we should, we should have Bible study at our house. She's like, our house? I was like, yeah, this thing is a mansion. It's 1,400 square feet of nothing but bliss. Are you kidding me? We had a Christmas party at our house one year. It was actually snowed way back in the 2000s, and it kind of made its way in. We had 101 people in a 1,400 square foot home, all singing and worshiping Jesus. I had to repaint some walls because there was about 37 kids in my house, and they took over my bedroom and both my bedroom upstairs. But, uh, yeah, our house wasn't a measuring stick for me. It was better than any 700 square foot apartment sleeping in bunk beds with sisters growing up. A lot of times I just took the seat on the floor with the box fan blowing on my face. That was, that was mine. But whatever it is, um, the house we live in, the job we have, some of you hate your job. You're like, man, if I just had this job, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you just had that job, you'd hate it too. If you're discontent with life, you're just discontent and you're miserable and, and you need to figure out your why. I, I, I know that because I had this really cool job for 17 years and I thought, this is it. I'm going to be a vice president in this company. I'm going to make half a million a year. And then I got saved, and God was like, yeah, this is not for you. 
So then I applied for, uh, for a youth ministry job in Colorado. Thankfully, that didn't pan out because I don't think I could have lived in Bronco country. But that didn't work. <laughs> then I did some other things, and here I am. I thought in 2020, I got bored. I built a $1,000 chicken coop in my backyard, and I was like, I think I'm going to start a business. I, I was gonna, I'm going to find my, my, my happiness in that. I'll tell you right now, I wish I could go back to corporate America, just sit in a cubicle. Um, but uh, we, we find our why in all these things. It's, it's, not, in, it's not in any of that. And that's what, that's what I've come to realize uh, just every day. Uh, but we know we can't base our self-worth on externals, yet it's still a struggle for each of us. But on the flip side, God's me- measuring stick is this. He knows your name, you're redeemed and you're loved, and you were created with a purpose. Your why is to glorify God. Point blank. That's it. Everybody that comes in this room, whatever baggage you're bringing, you were literally created for one thing and one thing alone, and that's to glorify and honor and edify God and give Him everything you have every single day, and I can't even do it half the time. Amen. Isaiah 43.1 says this, But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Some translations say, I have ransomed you. I have summoned you by name. You're, you are mine. We could pretty much sit down and just talk about that and how we're living our lives fearing not because God has redeemed you, summoned you, and he knows your name. But that wouldn't be good enough for us because we'd walk out of here and go, yeah, but that was Old Testament stuff. I got you. But we find ourselves believing the enemy, enemy's lies, which impacts our confidence and self-worth. It's not if, but when this happens. I, I will wholeheartedly say I never expected myself to, to find myself in the predicament, the sinful, the, the sin that I was in in 2022. My wife and I have known each other since we were nine. We got pregnant halfway through high school, our senior year. I was like, man, that's how I, you keep the good looking ones, right? Ugly dude like myself. Jokes aside, I thought, man, this is it. God saved me. Everything's great. Kids are going to Bible school. I got one daughter at a Christian school. My kids are the homeschool granola kids. Can't have gluten. We're eating organic. I'm like, this is this is American dream right here. Like, this is everything I want. I drive a '98 Chevy with 200,000 miles. I am content. But then, as things start to pick up, and I get a little bit farther distance myself from that time of when I get saved, this whole sanctification process, that graph that we have, I don't have it on here, but I love it. I was in that down rule, but it was still progressing up. God had a plan through what happened. But it, so it's not if, but when this happens. When the enemy's lies at times impact our confidence and self-worth, I went out and found my self-worth and in a, in a, in a lady that just would talk to me and give me her time because I wasn't getting it at home because I was too busy trying to start a business and Whatever have you. It's, a, it's all an excuse, but it's the truth. Uh, we must return to God and discover our purpose and worth in Him. We have to know our why in Him. And that's what a lot of these brothers in this room uh, did for me. They, they just pushed me back to knowing my why. Uncovering accepting who we are in Christ equips us, and that's what we're going to talk about today, to resist the lies guaranteed to come. Instead of believing in them, you have to be ready to rage, wage war against them and replace them with God's truth for the Scriptures. We... Uh, we talk about, uh, where's it at? Where's it up there? God knows where is the biblical information without application results in no transformation. We come here every day. We talk about scripture memorization. If you've only been coming for the summer, there's going to come a point where we uh, hand out cards and we tell you to memorize scripture. It's not because we get like some extra brownie points because a bunch of grown men memorize God's scripture and we think it's something really cool to do. We give you scripture verses so you can put it on your dash, on your phone, on your mirror at home. Maybe you share it if you have a bride in your bathroom and you go, hey, we're going to memorize this. We're going to memorize God's word. So when the crap hits the fan and life really, really sucks and I've made a mess of it and I don't know how to get out of it, what does God's word tell me to do? Where am I looking back and where is my focus? God's truth for the, is, is in the scriptures. Um, it's not easy, but the importance of responding based on God's truth rather than a negative self-perceptions cannot be overstated. I put in here, it is easy. I'm like, oh, I don't know if it is. Um, these notes always look better, too, when I read through them on my couch with my coffee. And then I get up here, and I'm like, where are you at? Uh, <laughs> But the importance of what we're going to run through real fast before we get to table time is just God wants you to see yourself how he sees you. I'm going to use a word where you guys are like, hey, don't call me that. But men, 
You are beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God, the creator of all things. I mean, just think about it for a millisecond. Some of us not so beautifully externally, but he pushes and challenges internally to look inside because that, we were literally created to be exactly what God wants us to be, and we were made in his, in, in, in his image, in his whoever, what, what he is. Like He made us because of who he is. So do you believe his word to your core, or do we need to adjust your beliefs about your worth? So recognize the battle is in your mind. Let's point out the most obvious and possible most challenging fact to acknowledge as a believer. A life of faith cannot be steered by feelings. Your feelings are a liar. Your feelings will lie to you. Your self-worth, who you are, how other people perceive you. If you haven't figured out by now, I really don't care how anyone perceives me. That's why I still wear a fanny pack. I just didn't wear it up here today because I didn't want to get in the way. Okay? That's true. Yep. I saw some of y'all come and walk in with little man bags and fanny packs. I'm like, we're starting to craze. <laughs> but listen, a life of faith is not steered by feelings. Every time LJ leans into what he thinks, it's a lie. I think I'm not good enough. I'm not providing good enough. I'm not loving all my kids. Now listen, could I do better? Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't started raising adult children yet in 2024, Best of luck to you. Good luck. Um, it's tough. It's a tough sledding. Thank you for bringing him. Thank you for bringing, bringing him. He, right now, he's like, I don't want to be here. But you bought him a drink. Maybe, hopefully, maybe give him a donut. But he's listening. They listen. Because whatever the word is you put on your kids, you just pray and hope that they don't depart from it. And one day, the Holy Spirit gut punches them. You can't, make, you, can't walk, you can't walk the walk for anyone. We can't walk the walk for anyone in this room. Your sin is your sin, and we'll be here to love on you, and we'll push and guide you through it. But I told my kids, the minute they turned 18, I swear to you, I said this. Your sinful life is your life. I'm not going to sit here and feel bad about it. I'll love on you, and I'll pray about it, and I'll encourage you. But your dad's just as much of a mess as you are, and i got to figure out how to keep God in the center of my, my wife and, and, and my relationship. So get on out of my house, and good luck. Call me when you need me. So... <clears throat> So do you choose to believe what God says about you? Most of us don't instinctively believe it. That's because the battle's in our thoughts. We have to renew our mind. Anyone been to Conquer? Right? Conquer, Conquer series will just beat that into you. They, they get into really good scientific reasons on renewing your mind, renewing your mind. And that's great. I mean, I'm all about, like, let's uh, tackle sexual integrity. But let's talk about self-worth. Right? A lot of us hang our hats on, like, who we are and the status we have. But then... If I'm being honest, when you're laying in bed, that's that small, still voice. It's either my wife or the Holy Spirit, one of them. But it's always like, man, like, what are you doing right now to pursue Jesus harder? And I'm like, just let me go to sleep right now. Just let me go to sleep. <laughs> There's Jesus and my wife going, I thought we were going to pray every night before we went to bed. I'm like, yeah, so pray. No. <laughs> but it is. We have to renew our minds. And th th these are the things that can equip us. So Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, perfect will. That one hit me yesterday. That was the one that like, I had to get up and like, I actually went to my wife and I was like, like tears. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, easy. Be, be gentle. I said, I said, because literally I've read Romans 12, 2 through 3 a million times. Probably not a million. 900,000. And I'm like, but it literally tells you right there, don't conform to the pattern of this world. And every single day, LJ wakes up thinking he's going to go tackle the world. And then by 9 o'clock, I'm conformed to the world. I'm honking the horn. I'm doing night 80. I'm like, I'm yelling at my son because he's doing something silly instead of just being Christ-like to my employees. I'm like, eh, I got this. And then I get home and my wife's like, you look like crap. I'm like, well, it's hot outside. She goes, no, I can tell. I'm like, look, I'm a little exhausted. She's like, hmm. And then I thought about this verse yesterday. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renew of your mind. I don't do a very good job of that. And then LJ, or whoever, whatever your name is, will be able to test and approve what God's will is. So resisting the patterns of this world requires an attitude of mind that you overcome instinct and feelings, because those are liars. It requires a total transformation of the mind, enabling us to make wise and sound decisions that reflect His will. Know your why. God's will is your why. So, we can have the mindset of Christ. Did you know that Paul, yes, I'm going to reference Paul. It's old school right here, but some of y'all love Paul a lot. 
I attest that maybe he didn't have it as bad as some of us think he did. But regardless, he has great word for us right here. It's a joke. If you guys are like, is this guy mocking Paul? Yeah, probably. <laughs> we'll talk about it when I get to heaven because I know where I'm going. Uh, did you know that Paul told believers in Corinth that they had the mind of Christ? Again, I think a lot of times we read a verse like this and we go, well, LJ, this is Corinth. This is the book of Corinth. This is Paul. So, for who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. It's that simple. We have the mind of Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, God promises access to Christ's mind so we can think as he thinks. It's transformation. That's knowing your why. Your why is knowing your why and who Jesus is and knowing and believing that you literally have the mind of Christ. Not all the time. I know. I've hung out with some of y'all. I've had cigars with a lot of you guys. I've golfed with you. Some of you have golfed with me. And it's like, you don't, have the, you don't have Jesus on the golf course. <laughs> Chuck Mountain knows. He saw me trying to swing left-handed. He's like, that dude is not saved. I was like, yeah. I hit that ball. I was like, just take the club. Let's get out of here. I hate this game. But on the real, like we have the mind of Christ. Like how aware of that do we really want to be? So we have to, we have to get, we have to access that through the Holy Spirit that's been given to you at the point of the moment of conversion, salvation, that moment that God said, you were mine, your name's already in the book, you're going to be with me in heaven. The same thing that he told the thief on the cross, right? He's like, this is you, now go out and proclaim this and live this. So let's point out some of the common lies we believe. God can't love me, he doesn't love me, he certainly won't love me after I've done this. I'm worthless, I'm a failure, I'm condemned. Or, I like those, I was like, those are cool, but let me add to it. How about those of us that sit around and go, oh, I'm better than that dude. Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't sleep with my secretary. I haven't been divorced. I haven't whatever. Because, I mean, I think a lot of times that's where, that's where we start judging. I mean, I know for me, LJ doesn't feel like I, and it's a God thing, I don't, I don't walk around with the weight of, like, what I've done. Because I'm like, God, God literally said he saved me from that. And he loves me in spite of myself. But I do walk around going, I'm not that idiot. And that dude's going, that guy's an idiot. He's a, he's a, I can't believe that dude runs a company. I can't believe the people want to work for him. His wife stay with him through that? I can't believe his wife wanted to stick around after he, he did what he did. And I'm here to tell you that either side you, you sit on, whether you're judging yourself that God can't love you enough, or you're judging other people like, God doesn't love that dude. No way. Either way, you're wrong. Either way, you need to put a focus back on you and how much God does love you and what he calls you to do is go out and love others and you'll you'll find that that's a turning point I usually find my best days are the days that I just start sacrificially giving myself over to whatever God wants me to do and at the end of the day I feel a little bit better plus the blood work came back and says I have really bad cortisol levels and I should probably quit being so stressed out so the enemy doesn't want us to know and believe who we are we're loved we're secured we're valuable we're forgiven um Instead, he wants us to be crushed under the weight of believing we are helpless victims. We have to take an active role in, renew, in this renewal process to know our why, to overcome, and to win the battle. So we're going to run down. We just got like three quick bullet points, and then we'll get to table time. So you have to have a regular, well, these are some steps that I think help me. So let me just preface this by anyone going, don't tell me what to do. I'm a grown man. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you this. Have a regular plan time of mind renewal. This active role reference above includes learning the truths that will actively replace the lies. Hebrews says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Regular time in God's word reaps excellent benefit. It requires the D word, discipline. But when we read his word and we learn from him, we are prepared to replace lies with the word of his truth. We have to have a time to set aside the time without your phone, the time without I don't know, whatever it is you guys wake up and do in the morning. I go to the gym and then usually come home and want to fall asleep like six in the morning before I have to go back to work. Um, in addition to creating a habit of studying God's word, we have to arm ourselves with it, meditate on it, memorize it, and letting it work deep into your heart. That's why we memorize scripture. That's what we do so you have... A time of mind renewal. Why do we memorize scripture? I wrote that. I think I've said that enough times. We memorize scripture. 
Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Uh, let's just be careful real quick when we read that prosperous and successful. Um, when I read that, my hope is that I'm prosperous and successful in the ways that the Lord wants me to go. That doesn't mean that my business is going to be great. I mean, who knows? It could fold tomorrow. I'd be fine with it. But he wants us to be prosperous in the sense where he wants us to reap this, that, that wealth of basically forgiveness, love, and then go out there and put that on, on others. That's, that's the way I take it. And we will be successful. So we must know, understand, and act upon the truth. Start by hiding God's word in your heart. Some of you are like, my heart's really dark. I'm like, well, you better figure it out. You better allow the Spirit to, to, to get inside and do, do some work. You better invite the Holy Spirit then. And if you're like, I suck at memorization, I promise you this right now. If I ask you guys to write down a list just based off knowledge of something that interests you, give me top five something or give me some stats, give me something stupid. Like, I always go to football stats, right? I'm always like, oh, I love the Raiders. That's been my life. That's basically, I grew up right, like... And as crappy as they've been, they were like our religion. Before my dad moved out, I mean, that was, Raiders were religion, and they sucked. I mean, I remember they got killed 50-3 to three against Buffalo in the AC Championship game, and my dad broke the high chair, and I cried and scribbled all over my Jay Schrader cards. I mean, that's how bad it impacted life. It was bad. Go Bills. Yeah, go Bills. Still haven't won a Super Bowl. Um, you literally had four years to do it, and you guys didn't do it. But that's, uh, we'll talk about that later. But... But what, I, but what I'm getting at is like, we have all these things, man. We got all these things from work and from what, whatever it is, from your hobbies. I know some of these guys are like, like long range shooters, my uncle is, and he pulls out this chart of like every like wind direction and bullet thing. I'm like, what is that? I was like, you should try memorizing scripture. And he's like, I don't believe in God. And I said, well, if we keep hunting together. You're going to believe in something. Okay. But we all have something we could write down right now. And you're like, I know all of this. And then I go, well, why don't you memorize scripture? Oh, I can't memorize scripture. It's crap. Quit lying to yourself. Quit lying to yourself that your brain isn't capable and your heart isn't, isn't willing or able to memorize God's word. Quit it. You're lying to yourself. You're, you're a fraud. I'm with you. If you're up there like, oh, this guy with this dorky orange hat's going to call me out. Well, I'm speaking to myself, put a mirror right here. I'm a fraud. When I get angry and I act out, then I have to go back and ask for repentance. I'm like, there's got to be a verse in here that tells LJ to calm his heart, be respectful and mindful of others, and love Jesus with all your heart and not act like this. Why don't you memorize that scripture, LJ? Because uh, I don't want to. Right? That's on me. Anyway, train your mind to think about what's true. Paul says, set your minds on things above, not earthly things. Consider the negative thought patterns that we have taken up residence in your head and find ways to become aware of them. Identity, false beliefs that impact your reactions and perspectives. Then, once your awareness is heightened, replace those lies with their opposing truths. I mean, that, that's, that's number three. Train your mind to think about what's true. Turn off the noise. Excuse me. We're going to go to low battery mode. All right. Last one before we get to table time. Walk by faith, not by sight. How many of us say we believe in Jesus? How many of us say we're, we're followers of Jesus? It's a faith thing. There ain't nobody in this room has ever seen that man. None of us. Some of you all might have been there like when he resurrected. Maybe. Yeah. Bruce is like, are you kidding me? I was part of the 5,000 he fed. <laughs> faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Guys, think about this for a minute. Like, we get together because we're like, well, we're men who believe the Bible, the Word of God, this, this man that, that paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And because I believe in that, I'm going to get to go reside with him in heaven forever and ever and ever. And some of you are scared crapless over that right now. You're like, please don't let it be just harps and whatever. I'm like, I hope we can hunt. But then my wife's like, I don't think we can kill things and I don't think we eat meat. And I'm like hopefully he has something really cool for us. But what I'm getting at is like, there's faith in that. Like that feeling that you feel when it hits you, when I sit here and I go, know your why, and then I start crying. Like, like 
that's not me. Well, it is me. It's definitely me. It's 100% me. But, like, that's the faith that I live by is knowing that these words that, like, I put myself in intentionally, which I probably wouldn't have done had I not been asked to do this on August 3rd. Like, I would have never jumped in to know your why. But when God met me in the cab of my truck, I was like, hey, dummy, your why is me, and you just basically gave all the glory to your family, which are all great things that I've given you, and I'm very, very pleased with those things. I'm your why. And I was like, oh, that's the faith that I live in, that that same God that met me in my truck by way of the Holy Spirit, which is still completely God, that's the faith that we, we sit here and set our minds on things above, not earthly things, walk by faith, not by sight. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and ensured about what we do not see. Uh, I'm going to need you to do the next slide because that thing, I think, just died on me or I didn't use it enough. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 says this, And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him or who earnestly seek Him. Let me read that again. And without faith, this is, remember, everyone that raised their hand, you're like, I believe in Jesus. That's your testament to faith right there. That's not because we saw a dude preach a, a sermon at the, the football stadium here, and you're like, yeah, that dude right there, that's the Savior of the world. He's going to save us all. Some of y'all think that that's happening right now, leading up to some election that we have going on. You're like, that's the Savior. You're wrong. I don't want to hear about it. I'm not going to make it political because I don't care about left, right, or center. I just know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes before him Amen. through Him, but through his word. Amen. I don't care about that. He already knows what's going to happen. Go cast your vote, whatever. I'll keep paying my 900% taxes on my employees every two weeks, whatever, $5 a gallon. It doesn't matter. Who's going to start a mobile business when gas is $5 a gallon? This guy, if that tells you how smart I am. <laughs> I did. Spent $47,000 in gasoline last year. Everyone's going, yeah, we hope. I go, listen, man, even if the next, next dude wins and it's not who you want, whatever. It is what it is. Okay, God is literally the faith that we put our, our hope in is the one that came 2,000 years ago that said, I, I am him. Follow me. Throw everything you have aside. And then he tells us to go feed the homeless. Right? We do, we do mission trip down south. We love on those that are less fortunate. Some of you are like, I'm less fortunate, love on me. Well, that's what we do in this room. Amen. This table time is we love on each other, Amen. the less fortunate and the ones that are idiots like myself. So, faith is the foundation for choosing, filling our minds with God's truth and stopping and stop living in the way that opens us up. Hold on. Who typed this? Faith is the foundation for choosing, filling our minds with God's truth and stopping living in a way that opens us up to believing the lies. Do you interact with God's words regularly? And are you reflective? Uh, are you reflect? Are reflection and prayer a part of your life? Do you make these things a priority? Are you harboring negative feelings about someone? Trust Him to change your thinking habits. So I think when, when I was all said and done, and we'll get to table time, when God met me in my truck, and He said, LJ, you stood in front of a group of people that you have the opportunity to tell them your why. Why do, you, why do you own a business? I own a business because God gave me the ability and the desire in my heart to own a business. God wanted me to leave a legacy for my children because I don't know what legacy means in terms of what my parents leave me. I wanted to do something greater because I feel like God's given me a platform and opportunity to love on the young men that come into my work and to try to be Christ-like. And then turn around and whatever money I get, we pay bills and we have a nice little house and we just give it, give it away. I've never felt the need to give more money to people than I have when God just starts blessing me. That's what I should have said in front of the group of 20. And I didn't. And I told God, I'm sorry. He said, it's all right. I still love you. He goes, you'll have another chance one of these days. I said, okay. But you have to know your why, gentlemen. Your why isn't anything that you can do on your own. And if we would take a minute to be in His Word, meditate on it daily, put it on our heart, and then go out and love others the way that He calls you to love others, you'll know your why. So we got some questions that I threw together last night. I have no idea if they make any sense. I don't really care because you guys usually find some stuff to camp in and it's a really good time. But hopefully these will guide you um, through it. So 
Let me just pray. I know we normally don't close in prayer, but let me just pray for us, and then we'll get to table time. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for who you are and what you mean to, to us as men that, that want to be godly, that want to pursue you daily. It's, uh, it's a horror world, and uh, your word tells us not to conform to it. And I confess, Lord, that my, my ways are to conform to what's easy and what might esteem me and put me at the head of whatever it is. But Lord, I just ask that we would just continue to die to self. We'd give you more room to grow in our hearts and our minds, that we would just uh, be mindful of really the life that we can live abundantly through you and in you, and that we wouldn't be afraid to step out in faith and proclaim that. Thank you for this morning, Lord. We pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Good job, LJ. That was great. Thanks. <laughs>